Hi, welcome back to Seal of the Living God Ministry. My name is Benny. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, just as a reminder, this is a Bible-based Bible study ministry, and we go by what Jesus said in Matthew 4:4, 4, 4, where he says, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So that is our intention today. And the subject matter that we're going to go over today is called, What is the fear of God. In other words, what does it mean when the Bible says fear God or when it says the word the fear of the Lord? So a couple principles I want to lay down as we begin the study is that first of all, when we see the word fear God or the word the fear of the Lord, those words are interchangeable. So just keep that in the back of your mind. They're both expressing the same concept. Okay, that's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make is that we're going to look at something called Hebrew parallelism and literary structures of verses. So throughout today's study, you're going to see a lot of references to Hebrew parallelism and again, the actual structure of the verses. So sometimes when we're reading the Bible, especially if we're just kind of surface reading, uh, we'll, look, uh, we'll miss out on those little nuances, but those nuances make it very interesting to see how God defines his words. So just to give you a slight uh, understanding of what parallelism is, what it is, is it's uh, where the literary structure is providing us a compare and contrast. Sometimes it's using two words that are similar to one another, sort of like synonyms, or it'll use two opposite words like antonyms where they're opposite one another. And I think it'll be easier once we get into the Bible and we look at the verses and I start highlighting those differences. And based off the way those literary structures are expressed, we will see what the Bible defines as fear God or the fear of the Lord. So with that being said, let's open up in prayer. Our Father and our God, holy, holy, holy is thy glorious and precious name. That is what the angels sing, Father, so we say holy, holy, holy once more, Father. I praise you, Father. I thank you. I thank your Son and my Savior. I thank the Holy Spirit, my comfort and my helper. I ask for forgiveness of sins, Father, for I am a sinner, and I'm sure everyone that is watching this study is also a sinner. So I pray, Lord, you may have mercy upon us, that you may use this broken vessel, Father, that you may use me and you may speak to me and through me. Pour out your spirit, Father, for I am not looking to glorify myself. I wish to uplift your word. And I hope, Father, that this study may be a blessing to whomever listens to this study, whether it be one person or many. Father God, please be with us and please again exalt your name through this study. I pray and ask in Jesus' glorious name and for his name's sake, I pray, Father. Amen, Lord, and amen. And I was praying, I was thinking about something also that I usually mention, so I want to mention it again. As you're watching this study, if you're so impressed to subscribe to the channel, that's what I would tell you. We have a lot of studies we try to put out. Secondly, if you like it, please put the like, um, thumbs up on it. And lastly, the most important part, whatever you learn in the study, once you see it is from the Bible and the Bible alone, that is not my opinion. The most important thing is to share it. So whatever you learn, whether you want to share the video, whether you want to share the verses, makes no difference to me. Just share the truth of God as it is found in his word. So with that being said, why don't we start with the most common verse that is used for fear of God. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is in the middle of the Bible. It was written by the most wisest man that the Bible teaches. His name was Solomon. So we're going to go to Proverbs. And it's right after Psalms. And we're going to go to the very first chapter. Proverbs chapter 1. And we're going to go to this book a couple times. Because it references fear of God quite a bit. So we're going to go to fear of God in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Amen? It says here, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Let me repeat that one more time. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So this is an example of Hebrew parallelism. But this is going to be an example of not words that are similar to one another, but opposite one another. So what I want to do is I'm going to share this verse with you broken up a little bit uh, uh, differently than what you see here. So you can start seeing the pattern, the literary structure that's here. And let me just say this, that the Bible was built with 
a lot of literary structure. It's very poetic. We miss it sometimes because it's in English or whatever language we're list we that's natural to us. But the original language was Hebrew and Aramaic in the Old Testament, and the New Testament was Koine Greek. And there's a ton of parallelism. And if you study using the King James Version, you can see it if you read carefully. But these modern versions, let's say you use the NIV or the easy to read version or what the Living Translation, whatever it might be, those other uh, versions, a lot of times they summarize or they paraphrase. And when you paraphrase verses, you lose the literary structure. So you want to always try to go as close to the original as possible. And my preferred uh, Bible is the King James Bible because I think this is as close as I can get to the Hebrew. So pay, let's pay attention to this verse again. It says, the fear of the Lord. So that's the first part. That's one aspect of the verse is the beginning of knowledge. That's the second part of that verse. Okay, so that first part is the fear of the Lord. And the second part is what? The beginning of knowledge. Now the second half of the verse is going to repeat what the first one says, but the opposite of what it's saying. So look what it says. But fools, so that word fool is going to be the opposite of the fear of the Lord. And it says, despise wisdom and instruction. That is the opposite of what? Beginning of knowledge. So what we're seeing here is this verse is literally being split in half. The first half is showing the truth as far as the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. The second half is showing the opposite or the antonym to that, which is Opposite of fear of the Lord is to be foolish, and the outcome of being foolish is what? Despising wisdom and instruction. Amen? So if that still doesn't make sense to you, I think as we show you more and more verses, I think it'll start sinking in. So let me share with you the second verse we're going to look today. We're going to go to the book of Job, and Job is right before the book of Psalms, and we're going to go to chapter 28, so we're going to Job 28. Look at Job chapter 28, and we're going to look at verse 28. So Job 28, verse 28. So let's go to Job 28 and verse 28. Again, this is going to speak of the fear of the Lord. So again, as I said earlier, the fear of the Lord and fear of God are interchangeable. Okay, so look what it says in verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So let me repeat that one more time because I want you to see the structure. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Again, what is a Hebrew paralytic statement? It is a statement that is broken up so that it either contrasts or um, compares similar words. Now, it can be more complicated than that. Let me be honest. It can be more complicated. Some Hebrew parallelism uh, can be more complex, and there's other structures in there. I'm just expressing it as simply as I can. Um, so let's look at the breakup of this one and see what the definition is of the fear of the Lord here. It says, behold, the fear of the Lord. That's one part. That is wisdom. That's the other part. So that those two things go together. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Now let's look at the second half. The second half is going to express that same sentiment, but using different words. To depart from evil is understanding. So now that's the second part. Depart from evil, understanding. So the Hebrew parallelism here is showing us that the fear of the Lord is equivalent to depart from evil. And the equivalent of wisdom is understanding. Are you guys seeing that? Let me repeat that one more time, just to make sure you're seeing this pattern. Behold the fear of the Lord, that's the first part, and the equivalent to that is what? It says to depart from evil. So if you can imagine, fear of the Lord equals depart from evil. And the second part of that verse said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. So now we have the word wisdom here. What is the equivalent of wisdom? Understanding, right? Because uh, knowledge means that you know something. Wisdom means that you have knowledge that is applied properly, that you have understanding of that knowledge. Because you can know something, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you understand it or you know how to apply what you know. That's wisdom. So here we're seeing that the fear of the Lord is wisdom. And again, the equivalent to that is departing from evil. Okay, let's go back to Proverbs. Let's go back to the book of Proverbs. 
And we're going to look at some other examples. Let's go to Proverbs. That's after Psalms, after Job's, Proverbs. But now we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 3. And we're going to see a lot of this Hebrew parallelism throughout the study. Look at Proverbs chapter 3. And we're going to look at verse 7, I believe. Proverbs 3, verse 7. Again, let's see if you can see a continuing link that kind of links up all these verses together. That's what I want to share with you today. I want to show you how these verses are chained one to another. And at the end of the study, we're going to see what this whole picture, what God is really teaching us. So we're in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Amen? It says here, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Let's repeat it one more time. Fear, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So what are we learning here? We are learning that when we fear the Lord, what should naturally happen? We should naturally depart from evil. Doesn't that make sense? In other words, if I know God, as I should know him, shouldn't I depart from doing evil things? So if that's true, then I have an understanding of what the fear of the Lord is. But if I continue to live in evil things or execute or do evil things, do I have to fear the Lord? No, because this verse is saying, fear the Lord and depart, meaning leave from what? Evil. Make sense? Okay, let's move on to more about this departing from evil. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 8. So we're still in Proverbs. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 8. So we're in Proverbs chapter 8, and we're looking at verse 13. Proverbs 8, verse 13, and we just saw in Proverbs 3 that, again, the fear of the Lord is to what? Depart from evil. So now we're going to look at another aspect. It says in verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. So this is God speaking. He's saying that when you have the fear of the Lord, not only do you depart from evil, but it says you hate evil. And that's a big difference. You may think that's the same thing. It's not. So you may know it's wrong, and then you pick whatever vice, whatever thing is wrong. Drug, alcohol, pornography, whatever it is. You may know that's wrong. You say, I'm going to depart from that. I'm not going to watch pornography anymore. That's not good enough. What God's saying is, not only should you depart from evil, you need to hate evil. So in other words, we need to hate what God hates. When we really know God for who he is and when we have the fear of the Lord, not only is it knowing evil, but it's departing from evil and also hating evil. Amen? It continues saying some examples of evil. It says pride. Now pride is a very uh, terrible evil. It is the type of evil that we don't think it's evil, but it is evil. And many of us are prideful like me. I was very prideful, and God has humbled me, and he continues humbling me. Um, as a matter of fact, that is why Satan fell from heaven. If you look at uh, Ezekiel chapter 28, it talks about how he was filled with pride. So that's a separate study. And we have a, I have a study called Who is Satan? And you can look into that. But pride is the reason why Satan fell from heaven. So pride is a terrible thing in God's eyes. It continues saying, arrogancy, terrible in God's eyes, the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. So in other words, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Let's summarize so far what we've seen. The fear of the Lord is what? Wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil and anything that's related to evil. So these are some of the aspects of the fear of the Lord or fear of God so far that we have seen. But the second part of this verse is not expressed here. And sometimes we lose sight of the second part of it. So I want to show you the second aspect um, of the fear of the Lord as far as when it applies to evil. Look at Amos. Look at Amos, which is a small book. Many times we don't reference it. Amos is also in the Old Testament. Amos. And we're going to go over there now. I went too far. Let's go back a little. Amos chapter 5. And we're going to look at verse... 15. So this is the other aspect of hating evil. Because sometimes we can say, hey, I hate evil. I've departed from evil. Um, I don't want anything to do with evil, which is good. That's a good place to start. But there's another half of evil that you should know. Look at verse 15. Amos 5 verse 15 says, hate the evil and what? 
love the good and establish judgment in the gates. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. So what is the Bible telling us here in this verse? It says, hate evil. That's good. It's good to hate evil. But the other aspect of that is to what? To love good. So we can't just hate evil and stop there. So I'll give you an example. There are a lot of people that say, oh, I know it's evil to do X, Y, and Z, whatever it might be. And they depart from it. They stay away. And they hate evil. They also despise it. But those same people don't look to do good towards others. So not only do we have to depart from evil, not only do we have to hate evil, but we also have to do good. And not only do it, but love to do good. So that's an aspect that a lot of times we don't talk about. We have to do good. Um, the Bible in the book of James says, to him that knows to do good and do if it not, to him it is sin. So not only should we depart from evil and hate evil, we have to do what? We have to love good, which means we have to love to do good unto others. Amen? So let's go back into uh, the fear of the Lord. Let's look at another aspect of the fear of the Lord. Go to the book of Psalms. Psalms. We're going to go to Psalms 111. Easy to remember. 111. Psalms 111. And we're going to look at verse 10. Psalms 111, verse 10. And again, we're building up on what fear God and the fear of the Lord means. Look at verse 10. It says here, the fear of the Lord is what? the beginning of wisdom. And it continues saying, a good understanding have all they that do what? His commandments, his praise endure forever. Let me repeat that one more time. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have what? Them have all they that do what? His commandments, his praise endure forever forever. So let's break this down. This is Hebrew parallelism again. It says the fear of the Lord is what? The outcome is wisdom. We've seen that before, haven't we? And I continue saying a good understanding have they that do what? Do his commandments. So what's, what, what's similar between the two? Beginning of wisdom is similar to what? A good understanding. And the fear of the Lord is what? Equivalent to do his commandments. So the fear of the Lord leads towards obedience to God's commandments. So in other words, you can't say you fear the Lord and not keep his commandments. You have to fear the Lord and keep his commandments. So let me give you a second witness because you can say, hey, Benny, that sounds good, but that's only one witness. Let me give you a second witness because Jesus said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Let's go back to Solomon. Ecclesiastes is after Proverbs, and this is the wisest man that ever lived. Listen to what he said at the very end of this book um, that he wrote. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, look at verse 13. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. Let's see if this is similar to what we just read in Psalms 111, verse 10. Amen? So Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and do what? Keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Let me repeat that one more time. Let us hear the conclusion of this whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So what, is, what are we learning from, from Solomon here, inspired by God? He's saying that, that let's summarize what I've learned in my life. This is what he's trying to say in the book of Ecclesiastes. The book Ecclesiastes, by the way, means preacher. That's what the word Ecclesiastes means in the Hebrew, preacher. So this man is preaching right now, and he's telling you, let me tell you the outcome of what I've learned in life. That is exactly what he's saying. He's saying, fear God, that's what he's saying, that's one point, and keep his commandments. Meaning that when you fear God, it has to come as a package deal. It has to be fearing God and obeying God. You can't say you fear God and not obey Him. And what I'm speaking of here very clearly, so you don't miss my words, is keeping His Ten Commandments. The world will tell you that the commandments have been done away with. That is not in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, nowhere does it teach you that the, Bible, the Ten Commandments have been done away with. So typically where people have this false theology is because they look at what Paul writes about the law, 
And they think every time you see the word law, that's talking about the Ten Commandments. But that's not what it's talking about. You always have to read in context. There's, there's a saying, text without context is pretext. Meaning you can't cherry pick verses and say, oh, here it says the law has been done away with. You have to read every verse in the context of the chapter, in the context of the book, and how it fits with the rest of the Bible. You can't just cherry pick where you want. So when Paul talks about the law, he's not just talking about the Ten Commandments. He's talking about the law of sin and death. He's talking about the law of faith. He's talking about the law of the Ten Commandments at some times. He's talking about the law of circumcision, the ceremonial laws. He's talking about a lot of different laws. It's not just one law. There are many laws, the health laws, for example. So you have to read in context. But everywhere in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, it clearly teaches that God's commandments are everlasting and will never come to an end. So what is he saying here? Fear God in verse 13 of Ecclesiastes 12 and keep the commandments. So let's just ask ourselves a question. Let's be logical for a second. Let's assume that the commandments were done away with, supposedly. That's what people say, right? Is there sin in the world right now? Yes or no? Yes, there's sin. I don't think any Christian would say that there's no sin in the world. Obviously, there is sin in the world. Now, what is sin? That's the question we should ask ourselves. What is sin? Well, if you go to the Bible, the definition for sin is sin is the transgression or breaking the law of God. That's what the Bible defines as sin. Let me repeat that. The Bible defines sin as sin is the transgression or the breaking of God's law. It's also in the New King James Version says lawlessness, meaning breaking the law. So if sin is defined as breaking God's law and there is sin today, what does that also tell you? Think about it for a second. That means by default, there has to be a law because you can't commit sin unless there is a law. Do you understand that? Sin means you're breaking a law. So if the commandments are done away with, there's no more sin. Paul actually says in the book of Romans chapter 4, he goes, where there is no law, there is no sin. But there is sin, which means what? There must be a law. The problem is that most Christians, sadly, don't think before they say things. They don't step back and look at the Bible as a whole and say, well, let me see what the Bible really teaches. So that teaching that the law is done away with, that is straight from Satan. Because Satan would love to get rid of the Ten Commandments. Why? Because he broke the commandments. He broke. He was the first one that broke God's commandments. And what is the end result to those who break the commandments? They're going to get thrown into the lake of fire. That's what Revelation 20 says. And he wants to do everything possible to not get thrown into the lake of fire. So what does he want to do? Let's get rid of the law. If we get rid of the law, you get rid of what? The condemnation of the law. So this is a theology from Satan. Don't fall into that trap. If somebody tells you, hey, you don't have to keep the commandments anymore, brother or sister, you should turn and run the other way. Wherever they're at, just run in the opposite direction because they are speaking on behalf of Satan. Whether they know it or not, they are speaking on behalf of Satan. So just like Jesus said, I rebuke thee, Satan, when Peter was trying to discourage him from going to the cross, you should rebuke those brothers and sisters very lovingly and show them that the Bible clearly teaches God's Ten Commandments have never been done away with. Amen? So... Let's go back to the fear of the Lord, all right? I had to, had to get that off my chest because it drives me crazy that people think God's commandments have been done away with. It's never been done away with. Let's go to the book of Psalms 33. Go to, back to Psalms. Psalms in the middle of the Bible, chapter 33. We're still looking at the fear of the Lord. Psalms 33. And let's look at verse 8. Psalms 33, verse 8. It says here, Let all the earth... Fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. Let me repeat it one more time. Let's see if you can identify the Hebrew structure here, the, the parallelism. It says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Okay, that's the first part. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. Did you see it? Did you see the broken, where it breaks? So here it's saying, let all the earth, that's for the first part. The second part is what? Fear the Lord. Okay, that's the two break points there. Now the second half of the verse, let all the inhabitants, isn't all the inhabitants the same as saying, let all the earth? It's the same exact thing. It's just, it's a synonym. It's another word, another uh, phrase is being used to express the same thing that was said already. So let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. 
So what is this teaching us? This is saying that let all the earth is the same as saying, let all the inhabitants of the world. And now the second part says, fear the Lord. And the, the equivalent to that is stand in awe of him. So in other words, what is the Bible showing here? That the fear of the Lord means to be in awe of God. You ever heard of the word awesome? That means a lot of awe, meaning that we're blown away. So when we fear the Lord, Lord, we are in awe of him. That's another definition that the Bible teaches us. And now I want to bring us back to my favorite verse on this subject. And the very last verse I'm going to share with you today is Proverbs chapter 9. Let's go to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 9. And let's look at the very last verse that I'm going to share on this study today. Proverbs 9. And let's go to verse 10. And I think this is the one that summarizes everything. And then I'm going to provide you a summary to encapsulate everything we just went over. Look at Psalm, excuse me, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. And let's read very, very carefully. Remember in uh, Isaiah 118, it says, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. So God wants us to use our minds when we study the word. He doesn't want us to read like robots. He wants to really think about and wrestle with him to see what he's trying to share with us. Look at Proverbs 9 verse 10. It says, the fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom. And it continues saying, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Let's repeat it one more time. And let's see if you can identify here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is is understanding. Okay, so let's do the easy part. It says the beginning of wisdom is equivalent to what? Knowledge. Isn't that the same thing? So it's saying wisdom and knowledge. Those are the two things that are being compared to one another. And it's saying the fear of the Lord is equivalent to what? Knowledge of who? The holy is understanding, meaning that the fear of the Lord is when you understand the holy. Who is the holy? God is the holy that's being referenced here. So when you read where it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding, the holy being referenced there is God himself. So in other words, when you fear the Lord, you know the Lord. You have understanding of the Lord. And that's really what the fear of the Lord is. So let me try to summarize all these things for you. Let's go through each one that we just covered. Okay, the fear of the Lord, that means to have what? have knowledge. What else does it mean? It means you should have wisdom. It means you should hate evil, but also love good. And remember, we had seen that hating evil means departing from it, but also hating it. And part of hating evil means to love good, to do good for others. It also means to keep his 10 commandments, not nine out of the 10, 10 out of the 10, which includes the Sabbath day, which is Saturday, not Sunday. If this is new to you, look at the study I provided on the law, it's called. And then lastly, we just saw here, the fear of the Lord means to personally know him, to know him intimately. So when you're thinking about the fear of the Lord, you should think about, do I really know God? Do I have knowledge of God? Do I have wisdom of God? Do I hate what God hates? Do I turn away from evil? Do I look to do good? Do I obey God? Do I know God? Really, that's what the fear of the Lord is. So, brothers and sisters, the fear of God and also the fear of the Lord or fear God all mean the same thing. And what does it mean? To know God. And when you know God, you love God. That is really what's being spoken of when you say the fear of the Lord. So the question is, do you love God? If you do, let's summarize again. You will have knowledge. You will have wisdom. You will have understanding. You will have uh, a desire to depart from evil. You will have a desire to hate evil. You will have a desire to love good. You will have a desire to keep his 10 commandments. You will desire to know who God is. That is the fear of God. That is the fear of the Lord. So with that being said, let's close out in prayer. Our Father and our God, holy and glorious is your precious name, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with the word that you have given us and the truth that is found in your word. Praise, honor, and glory be unto you, Father, forever and ever and ever. We thank you, Father, for what you have revealed to us today. And we just pray, Lord, that we may all have the fear of the Lord, that we may have uh, an understanding of what it means when you say fear God, which really means to love you and to know you, to hate what you hate, to love what you love, 
to do good to others, to have knowledge of you and wisdom, and to keep your commandments, Father. So please bless us with that understanding, and may you be glorified in our lives, that people may see us and may recognize that we do know the Lord, for we fear you, not out of fear like we have in this world, but because we love you and we are in awe of you. Bless each listener, Father, and impress them to share this truth with others so people are encouraged to seek you out. For your word says in Isaiah 55, verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. We are calling you now, Father, but we want to be near to you, and we want to know you. We pray and ask this in Jesus' glorious name, and for his name's sake we pray, Father. Amen, Lord, and amen. Thank you once more for joining Seal of the Living God Ministry. My name is Benny once more. If you have a question please or a comment, please put your comments below. I look at them very frequently and I try to respond as best I can. Uh, if you enjoyed the study, please like it. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. And most importantly, please share. Share the Bible verses, share the study, whatever you want. Just share the truth. God bless you all. See you next time.